money. It can be awkward to talk about. The source of so much stress in so many homes. I had to cash out my retirement in order for us to live and take care of bills and take care of this home. This week, we talk about money and bring you the stories of millions of Americans who are struggling with it, what they're doing to handle the challenge. This is The Race. Welcome to The Race, I'm Chris Stewart. The amount of Americans dealing with student loan debt is staggering, and so is the amount of money that loan holders pay out on average each month. Now here in Washington, D.C., they have some of the highest rates of student loan debt in the entire country. And while payments have been on hold for much of the pandemic, they're set to begin again in October. And that's a move that some worry could hurt our country's recovery beyond the pandemic. I'm a first generation student. Uh, my family is a family of immigrants. Even though my nuclear family didn't have, you know, a history of like completing college, but I knew for me that was my pathway out. College is a defining moment in life but many Americans will tell you its cost has truly defined its impact on theirs. While it was a great experience, I made great network connections, I learned a lot. Um, you know, after I finished, I found that employers weren't really offering much by way of competitive salaries for that degree. And I found myself wondering, was it even worth getting that degree? I was raised in poverty. Where Tyrone Hanley grew up, college is not a guarantee. My mom raised us in Section 8 housing. He overcame the odds and went on to graduate law school. But the journey to a better life has a price. Right now, it's like like 200, over $200,000 in student debt. I wouldn't go to grad school again. Um, I would do undergrad again, uh, but I would probably prioritize the schools that had offered me, like the state schools that had offered me a more reasonable financial package. Jessica Gowrich says it's hard to think of the future when she's still paying for what it took to earn undergraduate and graduate degrees. How can I even think about bringing a child into this world when I've got almost 100K in debt? More than 44 million Americans are in student loan debt, which is larger than the entire population of California. But during the pandemic, the government put a pause on borrowers having to make payments on federal student loans. I've been able to put that money aside for my savings, and now I have more savings than I've ever had in my entire life. October could be an unwelcome return to normal. Borrowers will have to start making payments again. I went to law school um, and my parents did, couldn't afford to send me to, to college. DC council member Janice Lewis George still carries tens of thousands of dollars of student debt herself. For many of us, we had no other option um, and we were sold uh, a dream um, with a big price tag. African-American college graduates owe on average $25,000 more than college grads who are white. In the black community, it just feels like student loan debt is literally stifling our ability to even be able to attain even just a, 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 a inch, uh, gain an inch of wealth or progress as a community. She introduced a resolution in her city that was unanimously approved by the council, calling on President Biden to cancel student loan debt. Cities like Boston and Philadelphia have done the same. We're trying to make this a national push. So what's next is sending our resolution to other cities um, across the uh, across this country and saying, hey, let's stand together in solidarity and let this administration know that student loan debt is a crisis. Critics point to the cost of forgiving student loans and say it's unfair to let those with debt off the hook. You need to go to college, and in many cases, you need to go to graduate school in order to get a decent income, especially if you're someone like me who grew up poor. My parents didn't know how to advise me in this process. I didn't have anyone guiding me on, you know, how to fill out my FAFSA or, or what was a good scholarship amount or, or what's a good loan or what's a good interest rate. These were things I didn't understand until years later. It's easy to point to numbers to show how big of an issue student debt is. Those with it say to see its true toll, look to the people within its grip. I think through our stories, people really can have a better understanding from an emotional and human level to really wrap their heads around this issue and to understand what my generation and younger generations are dealing with in this moment. Millions of baby boomers retire each year with a record number doing so last year. But for many, the financials just aren't there. The median 65 year old has $58,000 saved for retirement. That's according to Vanguard. What's worse, 
45% of baby boomers have no retirement savings. Alexa Liaco met a family now crunching to save enough for a comfortable retirement. 43 across. These moments together. Good job. Are Niels Vishlock's way of saying thank you. My parents took care of me my whole life. It's my turn. He never imagined caretaker as a line on his resume, but it's the job he knew he needed to take. My mother had just been diagnosed with uh, dementia. And she, we were told she couldn't live by herself anymore. Neil had just before lost that, his longtime job. And I worked 13 years there before they let me go. So I was, it was a shock. That's when I sold my house and I moved in with her. But helping his aging mom put his own retirement on the line. I haven't been able to find work and now it's even harder since she's progressed in her dementia, it's harder for me to do that. And I have no money to pay for, for a, a keeper to come in and stay with her. His unemployment eventually ran out and bills started to pile up. COVID-19 made the financial burden even heavier. Well, I had to cash out my retirement in order for us to live and take care of bills and take care of this home and you know try to keep the upkeep on as much as possible. So, and it's it's become very difficult. And now I'm, I'm scared for my future because I have no future at this point. The retirement he planned for, now a dream deferred. So my picture's changed dramatically. 15 years ago, I was on track. I was doing well. I was going to retire early. My, my finances were in order. And then I had to sell my home and then my truck got repossessed and I was trying to move here. It was all caving in on me at one time. I actually almost had a nervous breakdown. A study by Edward Jones found that one in three Americans is now delaying retirement after financial problems caused by the pandemic. And even before COVID, 61% of retirees say they wish they had done a better job of planning financially for retirement. Nearly half of baby boomers surveyed have have no savings going into retirement. Hillary Simmons runs the nonprofit A Little Help and says many of the retired adults she assists are coming out of retirement just to pay the bills. This next generation of older adults are delaying retirement, are looking for um, supplemental income opportunities as they age um, and kind of getting to that gig economy that, that millennials are so um, familiar with. So that's been an interesting trend to see. I don't know that, um, you know, the previous generation's older adults needed to do that. But Neil knows the choice he made to care for his mom was the right one. So you do the best you can to survive and to take care of the people you love. And that's where it comes down to. And each day he reminds himself his life isn't over. But it begins with a G. It's just about starting over. I have hope for the future. I have hope that things are going to get better. I have hope that I'm going to be able to find employment again. I don't know that it's going to happen, but there's always hope. You, there's always hope. For The Race, I'm Alexa Liaco. Most service workers can't afford to take time off, whether for fun or an emergency. But that may change. The help that could be on the way for service workers and others working low-wage jobs when the race continues.